It says in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for ungodly and profane, and for murderers, for fathers, murderers and mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for purge persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So Paul calls the gospel the glorious gospel. So why is the gospel glorious? Why is the gospel glorious? It's glorious because it's good news. But why is it good news? It's good news because God has made a way for us to know Him. God has provided a way to know Him. And that is why it's called the glorious gospel. Now we all have different opinions about who God is. Maybe what's your opinion about who God is? But the Bible talks about that God is the creator, that he created everything. The Bible, the Bible tells us that not only God created everything, but that God is a holy God. The Bible says it in Isaiah chapter 1, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. He's a holy God and he's a loving God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But he is also a just God, a righteous God, who has to judge the world. So he's a creator, he's a holy God, he's a loving God, he's a just God. And this God created mankind. And everything he created was good. The creation was good. The, the whole earth was good. The Garden of Eden was good. It was all good. But then God said, don't eat from that fruit. Don't eat from that fruit of that tree. And guess what happened? Adam and Eve rebelled against God and they ate of the fruit and they, were, they had shame, they became guilty and they hid away from God. And that is a picture of mankind throughout history that mankind has hidden away from God, shies away from God, runs away from God with shame because all of us come short of the glory of God. All of us break the Ten Commandments. Don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery. I have no other gods before me. We all break these Ten Commandments. And we have shame and we, we become guilty before God. But God had a plan. God had a plan. God, God had a plan. He had a plan to save us. And that plan was to come down himself as Jesus Christ. And he took upon himself human flesh. And he lived a perfect life. He was born in a stable and he lived a perfect life. And he said in Mark chapter 10, I give my life a ransom for many. And his life was aiming to go to the cross. That was the what he wanted to do in his ministry, in his life, to go to the cross. He wanted to go to that cross. And as he go to that cross, he was going to be a, a savior for you. And, and ransom you and, and pay the debt that you owe to God that the devil had you in bondage your sin the things that you do wrong has you in bondage and we, we, we pile up the debt to God we pile up our guilt but Jesus come to pay that debt he came to pay your debt so that you could be set free he came to pay your debt so that you could know his forgiveness and know his cleansing and know his love in your life and that's what God wants for you today he wants you to know his love he wants you to know that you can be restored today he wants you to know that his love is here for you today that his love will embrace you today that he loves you and he wants you today God is not far off he is close th than you think his love is here for you and that love can be give, given to you if you but receive that love today. That love of Jesus Christ who gave himself for you and loved you and died for you at that cross. That love that was shown to you on the cross of Calvary. For 2,000 years ago, 
God showed his love to you by dying on that cross for you and giving his life for you. And the Bible says, as you all know, God demonstrates his own love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us.